Okay, Iceland number, I don't know, I don't know, three or four from this year, and I am here at Vesterhorn, one of the best photo locations in Iceland, and a place that I'm usually absolutely battered by bad weather at. And it's also a place that I have 12 to 14 really good images already. So coming back to a place is kind of easy to just go back and do what worked. But I'm always trying to challenge myself to try something different, even if it's only slightly different. So I'm gonna take this beautiful landscape and I'm gonna walk the opposite direction. So I've obviously got those awesome peaks in the background here. And every time I've come here, I've gone to the side of the road that's close to them. But I noticed these dunes actually extend quite a ways to the other side of the road. And I just wondered if I went farther away where there's more dunes, could I get more dunes in a more vast landscape in front of the peaks? I'm not totally dismissing these peaks. They're still hopefully gonna be my frame. I'm just going farther away from them to try to create something a bit more dramatic. It's kind of like human nature to see something awesome and try to walk towards it. So it's a little bit counterintuitive to walk opposite it. But I think for this particular wide angle photo that everybody takes here, I think it's better from farther back here. You do have a couple small issues, like there's a car parked on the side of the road up there. Probably needs to be photoshopped out. But honestly, that's probably about it. It's, it's a little bit more dramatic, just getting a little bit farther away from everything. I'm still super wide, I'm gonna be 17 millimeters, but I think it shows a much more dramatic scape being this far back, so. Let's set up this photo. Eventually I went 15 millimeters, wider than I thought. And for a brief moment, some color cast through the clouds and a grad ND filter helped hold in that light. I, I'm feeling pretty wrong walking backwards today because Generally, the idea is if a photo's not good enough, you get closer to your subject. So I'm so in this like mindset of I gotta get closer to my subject that today it just feels weird not to be doing that. But I'm up here, the image kind of worked, but it feels too similar to what I normally do. So I'm gonna keep going backwards. This actually feels so wrong. I'm walking away from obvious like photo spots towards the middle of almost nowhere. But I just saw something I can't resist, which is crashing water. I absolutely love a rough crashing sea. And I would love to put that rough crashing sea in the foreground of this. I don't know if that's possible because I don't know if I can get to it, uh, but I'm willing to find out. Yeah, this was a fail. Look at those crashing waves, they're awesome. But it turns out it's an island. <laughs> and I can't get out there, I don't have a tugboat. Or a rowboat, or a canoe. Uh, but those waves look awesome, and I was just imagining these waves, look at this. In the uh, foreground of that mountain, that's something totally unique. I've never seen something like that before. So that's not happening, sadly. But I am going to continue walking. So you never know. Maybe I'll see something else. Or maybe I'll get totally lost out here. I pushed along the beach until I realized that the landscape was pulling me away from my background. I started to walk parallel to the view in hopes that something would line up. 
and I started to worry that I wouldn't find a foreground. Then I found it. Found something, what? Grad filters in, Sat found something. I found something, and I think this is really cool. I don't know if it's perfect, but it's really cool. I found, I guess this is sand that's been covered in water, <laughs> and it's frozen over, and it's created this little tiny frozen river S-curving straight towards the peak. It's not balanced perfect, but sometimes nature is just not balanced perfect for your photos. But I think it's really cool. And if there was some sort of color in the sky, it would be amazing. Unfortunately, it's a little bit tonal, I guess, is the image. It's very gray and black and white, and there's just hints of yellow in it. And I think that still kind of works. So I'm pretty excited about this, and I'm gonna photograph it. Yeah, this definitely works. I wish the color was still in the sky like it was 15 minutes ago, but maybe this image doesn't need it. It feels powerful. Doing wanders like this is super important, not just for the time that you're taking photos, but for the future. I've never walked this way. And having walked this way now, I see something really cool that can happen in the summer if it rains a lot and you don't have wind. And that's some incredible reflections from way back here. So I've marked this down mentally as a place to come back to in those conditions. I grabbed an image of the icy reflection for future reference and worked my way back to the vehicle. Pretty satisfied with the locations I found. The following morning, I decided to take pictures without filming. So got up this morning and photographed kind of the classic at Vesterhorn, had some beautiful light. This was the result. I found a dreamy dawn image. Then a classic from back where I explored yesterday. And finally, a little bit of a longer lens image. And in continuing with the theme of getting away from Vesterhorn and away from the classic, I am way away from Vesterhorn. That's Vesterhorn way back there. I'm at Valnes Lighthouse, which is there. And uh, yeah, looking to make an image here uh, of Esterhorn. So if this is a beach. It's got two horns, Vesterhorn, Esterhorn, East Horn, West Horn, I think that's how it works. And it's an awesome peak. And with the right light, I think it can make a really cool photo. So, you know, wander up somewhere along these cliffs and see what I can do. I love it when this happens, but basically within seconds of arriving, I found a cool wide angle perspective of the curving uh, rocks with the peaks behind it and the waves have been absolutely crushing up on the rocks here occasionally. Uh, and the photo is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be F16 to get everything nice and in focus, probably about a quarter of a second to keep some of the drama. And then I've got a two-stop soft grad ND on the top. I might change that for a three-stop because it is very bright in the sky right now. But now it's just a matter of waiting for the light to come down and hopefully some of the clouds get lit. Maybe the peaks will get a little bit of light. And firing away at stuff like this. Look at this wave coming in. Awesome. Just awesome stuff. This is one of those moments and locations where landscape photography feels easy. I sat on the rocks and just watched the crashing waves and waited for the light for a solid 30 minutes. It was perfect. Eventually, it all came together. A wave smashed into the rocks just as a brief window of light pressed against the peaks and lit the waters. And to top things off, 
Even as the light faded and I was packed up and leaving the location, I found another image. Maybe even a superior composition to my first one. Sun's uh, just going behind the peaks and I think that the best of the light is actually over. I didn't get the clouds I thought I was going to get up top and the color, but I think it still works because most of the frame was down below and playing with this uh, water here was just so much fun and honestly today was just so much fun. I love exploring. Even if it's the same place that I've been before, I love exploring. That's what I love doing. So. Absolutely a good time here in Iceland, and I think there'll be one more video from Iceland this year. So, I'll see you there. Peace.